Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to do the second episode of Gay Netflix and it's going to be a review of the second season of Dead to Me. Obviously, huge, massive spoiler alert for Dead to Me season one and season two. It's one of those shows where they have quite a lot of twists and surprise endings things that happen that you won't see coming. So I'm going to try and give a really broad kind of season one recap and who the main players are to give everyone a bit of a refresh if they haven't rewatched season one since season two came out. So we have the main two characters. The first one is Jen Harding, who's played by Christina Applegate. I absolutely love Christina Applegate. And it's the reason that I watched the show in the first place because She's one of those actors I've always loved growing up. I used to be really into um, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. I think that movie came out in 1990 or 1991. So it's been around for a really long time. Basically everything Christina Applegate has done, I've really, really loved. Even things where she's had like a smaller partner. She was in the Bad Moms movies. They were really awesome, so funny. So I just really like her and that's what originally drew me to the show along with the creator is Liz Feldman, who she's done a lot of good projects in the past, but I've also just seen a lot of interviews with her over the years because she's gay as well. She does seem to have really made her mark and she's done a lot of shows, penned a lot of scripts for some really big shows. I know she did that show, Two Broke Girls too, which always seems to be on the TV for some reason, so I have seen uh, quite a few episodes of that. Jen Harding basically is a real estate agent living in Laguna Beach. She has two children, Charlie and Henry. She's married to a guy named Ted Harding. She used to work with Ted's mom in real estate and then her and her friend Christopher kind of branched out and created their own real estate company. But the other lead is Judy Hale, played by Linda. I never know how to say her last name, Cardelia, <laughs> but also someone that I've been a really big fan of. I originally started liking her when she was on ER, really long time ago now. Judy is dating someone who's quite wealthy. She is an arts and craft teacher at an old age home, assisted living nursing facility. And she also has some of her portraits shown in, in galleries. Judy's boyfriend in season one is Steve Wood, played by James Marston, another person I'm a really big fan of. Steve is from a very wealthy family in Laguna Beach, and he is basically laundering money for the Greek mafia. And the other main character we have is Detective Press, who works for the Laguna PD. So the first season basically kicks off with Jen Harding. Her husband has passed away. He was killed uh, when he went out for a run and he was hit by a car that drove off and they still don't know who killed him. Detective Perez is the detective that's leading the investigation into finding out what happened to Ted. Jen is in a grief group and she's befriended by Judy Hale. You know, they have very different personalities. Jen's kind of very dry, witty humour and Judy's very positive and sees the good and everything and I just really enjoy their contrast throughout but when Judy approaches her in the grief group Judy says that her fiance Steve has passed away recently and at the very end of the episode we actually find out that Judy's fiance Steve is not dead and he's alive and well and over the next couple of episodes it's revealed that Judy and Steve were actually the ones driving the car that killed Ted and Judy was driving and Steve kind of forced her to, to drive off. So over the first season, Judy and Jen become really good friends and Judy's obviously keeping this massive secret from her. And Judy and Steve are trying to dispose of the car that driving that night. It's a really nice old fashioned Mustang. So it's quite a unique car. In the end of the first season, Judy actually confesses to Jen and reveals that she was the one who was driving. At first, Jen tries to turn her in, Judy confesses, but there's no evidence. And over the end of the season, Judy also turns Steve into the FBI for money laundering. 
as she has all the evidence in this storage locker of Steve laundering the money. At the very end of the last episode of season one, Steve is looking for Judy and ends up coming to Jen's house, confronts her, and we're left with a cliffhanger of Jen holding a gun on Steve and he's being really aggressive and everything. When the second season picks up, we do find out that Jen has killed Steve, but she hit him over the head with a little bird ornament and he falls into the pool. But the way that she portrays it to Judy is that he was attacking her and that it was self-defense. But obviously Jen this season is living with the guilt of hiding something from Judy, whereas last season we had Judy hiding it from Jen. There's two additional characters to the second season that are mains, and that is Michelle, played by Natalie Morales, who I absolutely love. Judy ends up meeting her in the assisted living facility because Michelle has brought her mother to live there. We also have Ben Wood, who is Steve's twin brother, who when he shows up in the first episode of The Door, Jen about has a heart attack because she had no idea Steve had an identical twin brother. And over the season we learn that Ben and Steve are very, very different personality wise. Ben is a chiropractor and he also is a recovering alcoholic. And he's come back into town to try and find out what's happened to Steve, find Steve because at this point, Everyone just thinks he's missing. They don't know that, that he's been killed. Over the course of the first season, things are revealed about Ted and how he was actually cheating on Jen and all these other things, sides to their relationships. And season two kind of does that, but focuses more on Steve and the person he was and how he was cheating on Judy too with this other woman who's now pregnant and one thing I didn't mention about Judy is that when Steve and her were together had a really really high number of miscarriages and that's something that Judy really really wanted was children so the fact Steve's got someone else pregnant and when they're doing kind of a memorial for Steve Judy sees her again and it's kind of you know drives the knife in a little bit deeper. Over the beginning half of the season Jen and Judy are storing Steve's body in a freezer in Jen's garage and after a few episodes, they drive to this wood where they've heard through one of the kid's friends, who's hilarious, but also very dark, that a gang disposes of their bodies in this park. So they go and dispose of Steve's body there. The best part of the season to me, apart from the humour, obviously, because it's just a really funny show and it's totally my type of humour, is that Michelle and Judy strike up a relationship. You see them kind of getting closer over a few episodes and they eventually kiss one night when they're out with Jen and her kids and Ben at an amusement arcade and they go home spend the night together and after they've kind of gone into the bedroom someone else comes home who is Michelle's roommate and did kind of guess before it was revealed who the roommate was because they kept having Michelle mention live with my ex-girlfriend she's my roommate and they mentioned it so many times that I was like, this has to mean something. So at the end of episode six, it's revealed that Detective Perez, who absolutely hates Judy, is actually Michelle's roommate and ex-girlfriend. And the beginning of episode seven, where Judy goes out is making coffee and Detective Perez comes in is hilarious and very well done. The one thing I really liked about this relationship and how they portrayed it to us, after Jen had met Michelle, she kind of said to Judy, oh, you, you really like her? And there was no big discussion of, you like a woman? Oh, you're gay, what? There was just none of that. It was just, Jen was like, cool, she seems awesome. Like, you seem to really like her, like, good for you. And I just, to not have that whole coming out thing, and it was just a totally, you know, okay, cool. Like, they have blonde hair, they're a woman. And there was no massive discussion. And I read an interview with the creator, Liz Feldman, and, and she kind of said it was important to do that and to not make it this big deal. Unfortunately, our little shipping hearts for Michelle and Judy, after the reveal of Perez being her ex-girlfriend, Jen tells Judy, like, you can't continue to see her, you know, this is too dicey with 
the FBI is looking for Steve, people are trying to find him, he's missing, all these issues. So Judy tells Michelle that she can't see her anymore. And she does try and reconcile it a bit when Michelle's mom is taken into the hospital. For the last couple of episodes, we don't actually see Michelle. I'm really hoping in season three we get to see her back because I think pretty much everyone I know who's watched the show really enjoyed the character and Natalie Morales on the show. The end of the season actually has Jen going to the detective Perez and confessing the whole thing. Leaves Judy a note with the emergency binder and leaves her two sons kind of in Judy's care and Detective Perez and her go out to this park that they buried Steve in and they can't actually find his body. But all along, Perez and Judy's ex, the other cop, Nick, have been investigating the captain of the police who they believed was involved with Steve, the Greeks, and the money laundering. And because they get evidence against the captain, Detective Perez basically says, forget this ever happened, I don't want to know, I'm dropping you at home, she doesn't care, her, you know, she's getting her main fish, the captain. Jen also, you know, confesses to Judy and tells her that Steve wasn't actually attacking her, it was a verbal attack, but there was no, you know, threatening or choking her. And the very end of the season, Judy finally gets these paintings back from Steve's gallery that she was saying all season, you know, they, they're worth some money, they're her paintings that she's done. And we see her smashing open the paintings at the end and they are just filled to the brim at the back of the painting with hundred dollar bills. She helps Jen buy her mother-in-law out of her house and everything seems, you know, good and well. But of course we can't end the season too high of a note. We have Jen's teenage son Charlie going into Judy's to try and, and steal some weed from her and in the little box that she has the weed under her bed she has the letter from Jen which explains everything about how Judy actually killed Ted and it doesn't specifically say that but alludes to it and everything else that's gone on so there's going to be consequences next season because obviously Charlie is going to know a lot more and he's already been suspicious all this season. As Jen and Judy are saying, you know, I can't believe it's been all this time. Everything's going so well. They are driving in this new car that Judy has got for Charlie because he's turned 16 and they stop at a stop sign that Jen in a side story has been trying to get put on her street and they are completely T-boned by a car and Judy seems fine, Jen is a little worse for wear, and the person who actually hit them is a drunk Ben. You see the alcohol and everything in his car, and Ben completely leaves the scene of the crime. He and Jen have kind of been building a relationship over the season, so that makes it even more interesting that next season we're obviously going to see the consequences of that, but also Ben hiding these things and having to deal with the consequences of his actions. I did like how they didn't leave us on that wondering what's happening. The interview that I read with Les Feldman was that when they went to film that scene, they were actually gonna leave it ambiguous and say, does Jen survive? But Jen does come to and, and say a few words because as Les Feldman said, she wanted to give the audience some credit. Of course, they're not gonna kill Christina Applegate off at the end of the second season. So I did like that. But the very end of the season, Judy has marked where Steve was buried with a heart carved into the tree in the woods. And we see a hiker out with their dog and the dog is kind of digging where they have buried Steve. So some definite cliffhangers for next season. The second season was even better than the first season and that rarely, rarely happens, especially with a lot of Netflix shows. I feel as though they all have this kind of sophomore slump after really strong first seasons, but it was great. Again, the cast was amazing. All the season one cast were brilliant and the people they brought on for the second season were awesome too. Let me know what you guys think. Did you enjoy the first season or second season more? What questions you have going into season three? I know it's going to be a long wait as the show the last two years has premiered in May. So we are going to have to wait a long time. But awesome season. Really looking forward to the third season no matter how long I have to wait. 
As always, if you guys want to keep up with me between videos, please follow me on social media. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll be back with a Generation Q update very soon and, of course, more L Word content. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye.